Psalm 18 is a long psalm. It, it's been a long time ago, it seems like, but uh, I did preach the uh, uh, Psalm 18, uh, the first section. And uh, because it's such a long psalm, if you could see it's one of the longest in the scripture. Uh, last week I shared some details about that. If you have the, not last week, the last time we were in this, about the fact that this is one of uh, five that are the longest of all the psalms. Uh, and yeah, this is 50 verses long. Some of uh, the Psalms we'll get through in one session. This one will be in three. Uh, as I said, we did the first part a little bit ago. We're going to start here at verse 16. You can see from your outline there. And that's where I'm going to read down, uh, beginning verse 16, down uh, uh, a ways here. Uh, and uh, uh, the subject here, of course, is, uh, is uh, uh, praise. And uh, David is praising the Lord. And he's praising it for a series of things. We'll be looking at some of those things here today. Uh, verse 16. And he sent from above and took me and drew me out of many waters. And the, usually the waters refer to people. He drew me out of the people, many waters. And the, oftentimes that reference, that uh, uh, type is used in the scripture to, when the reference to waters. Uh, he delivered me from my strong enemy and uh, from them which hated me for they were uh, too strong for me they prevented me in the day of my calamity but the lord was my stay he brought me forth also into a high place and delivered me because he delighted in me the lord rewarded me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands he hath recompensed me for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him and I kept myself from mine iniquities. Therefore uh, hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands uh, in his sight. With the merciful thou wilt show merciful uh, uh, thyself merciful and with thy upright mind thou wilt show thyself upright with the pure thou wilt shew thyself pure and with the froward thou shalt show thyself froward uh, for thou wilt save the afflicted people but will bring down the high looks uh, for thou wilt uh, light my candle the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God I have leapt or leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The sword of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to those that trust him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to uh, to uh, uh, what uh, to war excuse me here I've got my glasses need to be adjusted here so that the bow of steel is broken by in thine arms thou hast given me thy shield of thy salvation and thy right hand he uh, right hand holdeth he me up and thy gentleness hath made me great a long passage there but a lot of great truth there by the way uh, uh, these are uh, good verses to really consider maybe in your devotions because uh, uh, we have a tendency to think that God just deals with us by grace he deals with us by grace but a lot of the way that he deals with us and things come into our life base, is based upon our life and this is what uh, David is reciting the things that he has done and then he said the things that God does God does good things to people that do good things and uh we can't just depend upon his grace for everyday life. Uh, we depend upon his grace for everyday life, but we ought to understand something. He also gives us his word and tells us what we should do and shouldn't do, and when we're doing right, we're going to get more blessed. And uh, we're living in a day today that uh, uh, seems like Christians want to just rely on the grace of God and not do any of the works that God tells them to do. It doesn't work that way. And uh, so when he talks about the upright and the uh, and, uh, and uh, the way that he's carried himself, that's going to make a difference. 
And so now he's reciting all these blessings of God. And uh, uh, I've entitled this uh, section on your outline, David's uh, Rescue, uh, and it talks about uh, his deliverance. He's going to talk about many of the blessings. Uh, and uh, uh, by the way, uh, let me uh, set the premise here. Uh, it's been so long since we've been through this. Let me just uh, recite some of the things, and then we'll stop for prayer. Uh, the premise of David's praise, uh, we saw uh, his affection in, da in verse 1, I will love thee, and then his, the, he uh, extols the attributes of God. The Lord is my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, he's my strength. He's uh, the one in whom I trust, he is my buckler, he is the horn of my salvation, he is my high tower. Those are all wonderful uh, things that are recited in just those uh, few first few verses there, all the things that God is uh, 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 to us. And then uh, the announcement of David, he said, I will call upon the Lord, verse 3, who is uh, uh, to be praised, and that you know, reminds us of our responsibility, and uh, so shall I be saved, that reminds us of his reward. Uh, he uh, he uh, will save us from our enemies. Then we saw the praise of God by David for his help, verse 4. Uh, David said he remembered his perils, his past perils, and uh, when sorrows encompassed me, when the floods of ungodly men uh, uh, made me afraid, the sorrows entangled me. And then he says, the snares of death prevented me. I'm going to die. And then re re God, David remembered in his distress, he called upon the Lord, verse 6. And he said that in verse uh, uh, 6, God heard me. And my cry became before him even to his ears. God hears us when we pray, doesn't he? Then in verse 7, uh, David declared the, the Lord was wroth or angry. And uh, when the Lord is angry, he says the earth shook and trembled. The smoke from his nostrils came from his mouth. Coals were kindled. He bowed heavens, came down. Uh, verse 9, uh, he rode upon a cherub in the wings of, uh, of the wind. Verse 10, he made darkness his secret place. Verse 11, his pavilion were the dark clouds and the thick clouds of the sky. And out of his darkness came the hailstones and coals of fire. And God judges, and darkness comes when God judges. And then the Lord uh, thundered from the heavens and gave a, uh, his, his uh, uh, gave a, and the heavens gave a voice, meaning thundering. And the hailstones and coals of fire came from heaven. He sent out his arrows, and, and at his rebuke, the uh, channels of waters received, the foundations of the earth were discovered. That was all part of our our, our previous sermon there that that uh, went through that quite quickly it took an hour I think I don't know. <laughs> took a while to get through that but uh, uh, we, we took some time to embellish each one of those things and now in verse 16 David's talking about his rescue and that's where we're going to pick up here today and now that's uh, I'll read verse 16 we'll have a quick word of prayer and he sat from above and took me and drew me out of many waters and this is David's rescue uh, he talked about the waters of judgment flooding, and now he said, but he drew me out, he separated me. It's like the, uh, in Noah's day, the judgment came, the waters came, but he drew Noah, and what did he do? He put him in an ark. He put him in an ark, him and his family, and uh, he prevented. David's describing his deliverance. He drew me out uh, of the, the many uh, 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 waters. And uh, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you. Uh, for your word. I pray that we'll receive a blessing from it today. Thank you for those that uh, showed themselves faithful coming to Sunday school. And I pray that they'll receive a double portion. And uh, Lord, I pray that thy word would speak to their heart, even as it spoke to mine, as I prepared this message. Now bless us with thy presence in Jesus' name. Amen. So David describes his deliverance. Uh, 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 God sent from above, he drew me out and drew me out of many waters, and I didn't put waters in your outline there, I ran out of space on that line. But uh, that's the thought, uh, waters represented the people again, and that's the, the thought. So out of humanity, he drew me out, and, uh, and he sent uh, from above and took me and drew me out. And, and by the way, God, God separates us, in a sense, from the world in the way he judges. God's, uh, God has a separation that takes place in the way that he deals with people. He said, he delivered me from my strong enemy that hated me. Verse 17, he delivered me from my strong enemy 
from them which hated me. They were too strong for me, and that's the reason he drew them out. He drew them out from those people that hated him. You know, uh, uh, listen, brothers and sisters of Christ, when you get to heaven, you're going to live in a place and be with people that love you. Uh, we have people today that hate Christians. They hate Christians. And uh, they say, well, they don't hate us. Uh, they, they tolerate us. Uh, well, uh, they certainly love us less than they love the world. If they loved uh, us as much as they love the Lord, they wouldn't love the world. They wouldn't love the things of this world. They wouldn't love the ways of this world. Uh, and uh, the, the reality is, uh, is uh, they don't love the Lord either for the very same reasons. And uh, so he delivered us from our strong enemy that hated us. And uh, he delivered me for they were too strong for me. Verse uh, 17, for they were too strong for me. Uh, friend, uh, we need God's deliverance because the wicked around us, uh, we're not strong enough to stand up to him. But we got a great defender, don't we? Uh, and the Lord separates us from that. By the way, he separates us from them in judgment, too. He judges them, and he doesn't judge us. And, uh, and he, uh, they, uh, this world has got ways about it. And, you know, uh, we're waiting for the great deliverance. What's the next great deliverance? It's called the rapture, isn't it? It's called the rapture. Why is the rapture going to take place? Well, the world is going to wax worse and worse. And... Uh, Standing for God is going to have a greater price till finally God reaches the point that says, got to take him out, got to take him out. And the rapture takes place and he's going to draw us out for two reasons, to protect us and also so he can shower down judgment upon the world because some of the judgment that's going to fall upon the world after the rapture takes place is awful, is awful. Aren't you glad you won't uh, have to go through that? You won't be hiding in your base, but you won't be calling on the... Uh, they're climbing into caves and rocks and all the other things. Listen, the tribulation period is a terrible period of time. And he's going to draw us out before that, that time takes, pa takes place. And, uh, uh, and he says in verse 17, He delivered me from my strong enemies and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. So we're going to be taken out of this world uh, to protect us from the enemy. And they're stronger than us. But the Lord was my stay. Look what, uh, what he says here in verse 18. They prevented me in the day of my uh, calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Uh, that word prevented there uh, is an interesting word. It doesn't carry the idea of, of holding us back, uh, more the idea uh, they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. They wanted to, uh, uh, let's, I'll put it like this, they keep us from getting the blessings of God. They, they don't allow us to be the Christians we ought to be. Do you, do you think the world and the flesh and the devil are against you today? You're right. And, and, and there are people about you that won't let you, don't want you to be the person. There are people that won't be in church today because of other people that are lost don't want them to go to church. And, uh, and they, they have a sense uh, that, that peer pressure, that whatever it is that keeps them from coming, that's why uh, they, they oppress me. And that word prevented literally means oppress. Now, I tried to, uh, in your outlines that you're looking at, that uh, if there's a word there that, uh, uh, that might uh, uh, be better understanding, I put it in italics and I didn't put it in bold print. So you can see in your outline, they, they prevented me. That means uh, they, they sought to oppress me. They sought to oppress me. And uh, we've been... Uh, uh, and, uh, but, but he delivered us from the oppressors. Uh, see, uh, the Lord was my stay, uh, but the Lord was my stay. That's a wonderful phrase, and uh, uh, it, it carries the idea of my support. Uh, Someone said, well, uh, I don't pray that much. Well, maybe the Lord's not your support like he ought to be. Uh, the more we pray, the more we are asked to depend upon him. And the more we depend upon him, the more we'll realize he is our real support. He is our real support. Somebody might say, Pastor, uh, what's it like being in the ministry? Well, it's, it's not too bad, but I've got a great supporter. I've got a great supporter. And the more you serve God, the more the Lord will support you. Service and support kind of go hand in hand. Someone said, well, I don't know how you prepare those sermons. Well, the Lord is my supporter. You see, he helps me find the messages he wants me to preach. 
I start, I tack lid to a text that the Lord is with me and his Holy Spirit is helping me. Uh, if, if you have a desire to serve the Lord or preach, listen, I'll tell you something. Uh, when you make that decision and you grow, it gets easier. The, the God begins to support you and help you as you're studying his word. Your Holy Spirit then takes a new role. Not conviction to read the word, but the real help to understand the word. And uh, listen, uh, 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 the word of God, quite frankly, is better understood when you're teaching it and, you're, and it becomes your support. And the Lord becomes your supporter. And uh, uh, he brought me uh, forth into a large place, verse 19. And he brought me forth into a large place and delivered me because he delighted me. Uh, he brought me forth into a large place. And what does that mean, to be brought forth into a large place? Uh, well, let me just ask you, uh, don't you find yourself being hedged in and the things you can do and want to do and you can't do? Uh, aren't you limited by the things that you would like to do? But you know, when our ways please the Lord, he gives us a lot more options when it comes to the things we could do and the places we could go the, and, and just the opportunity to serve him. It's a large place. This world is a wonderful world. Friend, I'll tell you something. It's like something. Wake up and smell the roses. I want to say this. When a person gets saved, starts living for God, uh, you begin to realize this is your God's kingdom. This is your God's world. Yes, it's tainted with sin, but it's still a wonderful place. And, and you get more blessings, more blessings, more blessings. I get blessings out of feeding birds. I used to shoot them. Now I get blessings out of feeding them. And uh, there's so many blessings that we can enjoy in life when we know the Lord. you got this peace in here that lets you smell the roses. It lets you see the blessing and see the wonders of his creation. See the wonders of his creation. When's the last time you took a walk and just enjoyed the, the wonders of his creation? I enjoy coming back from La Crosse and I can look off to the side to see where, where uh, uh, John Sweeney lives there. And uh, uh, you, can, you can barely see his house from the interstate as you go by the west, first West Salem exit, uh, or just before the exit. And, uh, if you're coming from the cross, it's kind of off, and you barely, you barely get a glimpse of it from the interstate. I don't even know if you can really see it very clear. But up behind there, he t he'll talk to me sometimes about walking up on the hills of the in the. It's it's a beautiful place. It's there's a, even if there's a few spots in, in between the, uh, on the interstate, you can look off and see just some of the hills and the and the valleys and the. It's a beautiful place. He tells me. You got uh, cougars up there or, or mountain lions? What's up there? Yeah. It's a uh, leaving off the septic days. It's a beautiful place. It's a it's a wonderful you know. But all of creation is like that. My dad used to have forty acres out by Lee and out in the hills there. It was just. It was a place just to go for a walk. When's the last time you went for a walk in the woods? Oh man! Of course, now you got this post. Every bit of ways is posted. I was, but th this world is a beautiful, and it's God's world. It's God's world, and uh, He's my stay. And he brings us to those large places that we can enjoy. I was up north fishing last week. That's where I went after the funeral. I went up fishing, and we went up to a lake called Lake Grindstone, and. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a big lake and it, and it's uh, uh, kind of uh, well it's big I just would say that uh, it's a large place uh, and, but it, it, it all, you're out there you just see all the wonders of God's creation the shorelines wonderful place people say well I don't know what you get out of fishing well I'll tell you something I get a lot more out of fishing than just catching fish I get a lot more out of fishing somebody said I, I don't deer hunt. And listen, deer hunters get a lot more out of, out of deer hunting than just shooting a deer. The wonders of nature, the wonders of nature are, are, are beautiful. And uh, they're God's creation for us to enjoy. He delivered me because he delighted in me. He was pleased me. David then, in verse 20, he finds comfort that the Lord was pleased with him. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to cleanliness, of my hands he hath recompensed me. Now, 
this is what I was kind of talking about the introduction of this portion of the scripture is that David was comforted that the Lord was pleased with him and that the Lord was rewarding him and he says this verse there he says according to my righteousness according to the cleanliness of my hand he hath recompensed me now we're living in a time when people think God just deals with us by grace uh, well he deals, deals with us by grace but our God is a God that rewards us rewards us when, when look what it says there uh, according to the cleanliness of my hands according to my righteousness what is our righteousness that's when we're doing the right things that's when we're not doing we're not doing the wrong things with our hands God rewards us and he says this he rewarded me according to what does that mean the more we do what God wants us to do the more God rewards us so well, I don't know if I'd like that I thought we just all by grace but it is by grace it's by grace God rewards you all because you don't deserve a reward. But God in his grace rewards us and he rewards us according to my righteousness. What is my righteousness? Doing the right thing. Doing what God wants you to do. And when we do the things God wants us to do, our life gets better. One of the hardest things for a pastor to do is counsel people that are living in sin. And trying to get them to live right and to do right because their life is a mess, everything's going wrong, there's things they, they just have no peace, they have this, they have this, and, and you're trying to get, and maybe this would be a good verse to share with them and say the, that uh, the Lord will reward you according to your righteousness, according to the cleanliness of your hands. So, uh, according to your righteousness. Now, any righteousness we have it comes from God, doesn't it? He imputes to us righteousness when we're saved. But that's not a that's not a limited thing where all the righteousness I ever get will come with salvation. That's not what this says here. Uh, uh, he goes on in the next verse, the, uh, the, the second part of the verse, according to the cleanliness of my hands, he hath recompensed me. So in other words, that righteousness and that recompense of that righteousness uh, comes with salvation but according to the cleanliness of my hand. If I'm doing what's right, and I'm not doing the wrong things, how do you get dirty hands? Doing the wrong things. That's the picture of sin, isn't it? Hands are pictures of our works. When we're doing the wrong things, we shortcut short cut those, those uh, recompense. And so, according to my righteousness, number one, and according to the cleanliness of my hands, Oh, what a blessing that is. By the way, he uh, expounds upon that now in these next verses. Uh, and he describes exactly what he did uh, uh, and gained that righteousness and the cleanness. Well, uh, verse 21, for I kept the ways of the Lord. That's the first way. If you want to be righteous, if you want to be rewarded by God, what you should you, you do? Keep the ways of the Lord. The word for ways there is a word that implies the path. The path of the Lord. I said, now what does that mean? You know, when I was a kid, we lived next door to Grandpa and Grandma Ewers, and we would go back and forth, and we wore a path uh, uh, between the houses. And grass did grow there, so Grandpa, I don't think, was happy about it. But, because uh, uh, he liked grass, he liked a good lawn. But there was that pathway that was just dirt because we wore the grass right off that dirt. Gary and I would run back and forth all the time. We would, but you know, God has got a path for us to walk. And, and when we're uh, walking in the ways or the path that the Lord has set for us, we're going to get a blessing. We're going to get a blessing. Let me give you another uh, illustration on that because this is an interesting one. My brother and I uh, like to uh, do something in the evening. So we would go up and visit Grandpa and Grandma. Dick and Jim, who knows where they were. They might have been in the bedroom. They might have ran away. I don't know. Uh, at, at one point, he was off with a Navy fooling around. But uh, uh, we went back and forth so often that there was a pathway set. Grandpa and Grandma loved to play dirty clubs. And there was a, uh, and I, there was another card game they liked to play. What was the other card game they liked to play? 500. They loved to play 500. So Gary and I learned how to play these games. And at first, 
uh, uh, I would play with Grandpa and he would play with Grandma or something like that. And then finally it was them against us, of course. And we would sit and play cards and we would love that. We would go up in the evening and play cards. And by the way, uh, back in that day you got one channel and it was fuzzy. It was channel eight on lacrosse and it wasn't clear all the time. And uh, 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 it, it, so instead of watching TV, Grandpa and Grandma, they were, they, they liked to uh, 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 play cards. We'd go up and play cards. Well, we'd get done playing cards in the winter time. It'd be dark by the time we went home. It would be black and black. And by the way, you don't know what black is in town. There's no black in town. You get out in the country, uh, even though we're next to this, the, it, the when, the, when the darkness comes, it's dark. There was no night light out there. There was no yard light between the places. It was just pitch black. He said, well, how'd you find yourself? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, you had a hard time seeing the house. If there was a bedroom light on, you kind of knew uh, where it was. If you walked out the door, you couldn't see the house. So, uh, the the side that was, you, and that's the way it was. So, but when we would take off, I don't want to say we were scared of the dark, because that would be unmanly. But we were a little hesitant of the dark. Uh, so we would take off running towards the other house. You say, well, how can you run in the dark? Because we could feel the path beneath our feet. Because we could feel the path beneath our feet. And that pathway was a path. It was a path. And it was deep enough that you could tell the difference between the grass and the path. And we would run like the Dickens towards our house. And the first one got there lived, and the last one died. No, <laughs> there's no real danger. But, uh, but we would both take off. We would light off, run it, run it, run it, run it. And I want to say this. When your ways please the Lord, and you're following the Lord, and you're walking in his path, the pathway becomes clear. The pathway becomes safe. Even in darkness, you know the path you need to walk. Because you've walked it enough time, the pathway is clear. You talk to a Christian, but saved a number of years, and you say, well, what, what happens when, you, uh, uh, when, you, when this trouble comes? And you say, well, I walked the path. Well, how do you know? Does God speak to you? I've walked the path enough, and I know what he wants me to do. He doesn't have to tell me to do it again. He just wants me to walk. God wants Christians to walk the old path, not a new path. Read your Bibles. Go to church. Do the right thing. It's an old path. It's, an old path. it's a comfortable path. It's a safe path. And no matter how dark it gets, you know the path. You know the path. And uh, by the way, the devil would have to hide that path, wouldn't he? But, uh, but you could know the path. And you need to walk that path. I've kept the ways or the paths of the Lord, verse 21. And I have not done wickedly, and I have not wickedly departed from uh, my God, verse 22. Uh, actually, that's the second part of verse 21 here. Uh, uh, B is, uh, I have not uh, walked uh, de wickedly departed from my God. And again, I got the wrong number there, so forgive me. That's still in, uh, in, uh, in uh, verse number 21. I've kept the ways of the Lord. That's the path. I've not wickedly departed from the Lord. Uh, in, uh, in, in verse 21 again, instead of 22. I was upright before him. And uh, we need to keep ourselves, uh, his judgments, uh, before us. And uh, that uh, text there, for his judgments were before him. I've not put away my statutes. Verse 22. Verse 23. I was upright before him. I've kept myself in victory. And uh, so all those things that you're looking at there. I've kept the ways of the Lord. I, I've, not done wicked, I've not wickedly departed from the Lord. I was upright before him. Verse 23. I was also upright before him. Uh, and uh, by the way. If you want to know the ways of the Lord, uh, and the, uh, 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 you need to keep his judgments. And uh, don't put away his statutes, verse 22. And uh, that's what I mean by uh, departing from the Lord. We keep his judgments. Uh, so how hard is it to keep his judgments? Just do what he tells you to do. Just do what it, Do you ever notice that your parents are a lot nicer when you do what you they tell you to do when you were a kid? You don't have problems with your parents when you're obedient. You don't have problems with the Lord when you're obedient either. 
It's, and uh, those judgments before, and I put not his statutes. By the way, uh, verse 22 where it says this, uh, I've not departed from the Lord. Let me expound on that thought there. His judgments were before me. I put not his statutes uh, from me. Again, now we think of parenting here. And uh, uh, judgments, our parenting say, that's uh, don't do this. That's a judgment. They said that's going to be wrong. And uh, and then sometimes our parents lay down the law. No! That's a, he, he, he lays down the statute before us and you don't cross. And when we do that, God blesses us. That's what we're going through. Uh, the Lord's rewarded me, for I've kept the ways. I've not departed from the Lord. His judgments were his statutes. I was upright before him, verse 23, upright before him, meaning that, that I could stand before him perfect, meaning there's there's not aught between myself and, this, and the Savior. I've been around uh, disobedient kids. And I can remember uh, talking to one one day, and and, uh, and that was just really angry with his parents. And uh, he was a young man growing up in our church, and uh, he was just uh, just angry at them all the time. And uh, he was come to me, and he was he was dealing venting at me some of his anger. And and I said to him, I I said, you know, I'm not going to mention his first name. He does not hear anymore. But uh, I said to him, you know. And I was speaking to him at Bible camp. He was talking to me at Bible camp about this. I said, you know, I know your parents pretty well. And they're pretty nice people. If you stop doing the wrong thing and stop doing the right thing, you might find out they're pretty nice people too. But he was the kind of kid that just was always doing wrong and he couldn't understand why his parents were always upset with him. Duh. Duh. By the way, that's the stupidity of children. They have to grow through it. I know it's something people go through. But the reality is, is he had great a great mom and a great dad that were very loving and very caring and very generous and all those things. But he didn't get to enjoy it because he couldn't stop himself from doing bad things. He couldn't stop from sassing back. He couldn't stop, stop doing bad things. And uh, you have to keep yourself from doing, uh, from mind iniquity. That's that iniquity of doing wrong in the flesh. That, that tendency there. I was upright before him, and uh, I kept myself from iniquity. And uh, that upright meaning perfect. I kept myself, verse 23, I kept myself uh, from my iniquity. I stopped doing those things that I shouldn't be doing, that I shouldn't be continuously doing. Uh, it goes on here. The Lord hath recompense uh, unto me, uh, therefore. Now look again at verse 24. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands and his eyesight. This is the payback, friends. This is the payback. The Lord recompenses me according to the cleanliness of my hands and his eyesight. I touched on this earlier. I'm touching on it again. Just reminding us, if your ways please the Lord, he maketh even as our enemies to be at peace with us. That's another verse. But sometimes our worst enemy is ourselves. Our worst enemy is really ourself. And if we uh, 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 walk right, do right, according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands, and so according to my righteousness, how righteous are you today? Are you doing the right thing? According to the cleanliness of my hands in his sight, meaning that I'm letting he look at me, uh, he judges me. Verse 25. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. Boy, you see it's repeated there. You see those two verses? Great verses for child rearing. <laughs> Great verses for child rearing. Show them these two, two verses and say, you know, uh, I don't want to say I'm like the Lord, but you know something? If you do this, 
just like the Lord will bless you, I'll bless you too. I'll bless you too. And, uh, 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 and so now the Lord declares the justness of God. With a merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And now merciful, now uh, in verse 24, uh, we were talking about you and the way you live and, uh, and uh, your own obedience or disobedience. Now, in, in uh, this place here, we're talking about how you act towards others. Look at verse 25. With a merciful, what does that mean? That means you're showing mercy to people that perhaps have wronged you. And you're showing mercy to them and forgiving them easily. You're not one that holds grudges. You let it go. Does God let things go? Yeah, but uh, we have to confess. Listen, can't you bigger be bigger than that? Can't you show mercy? You honestly say, think that you're so right with God that he's not showing mercy towards you on a daily basis? Do you honestly think that 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 there's that you've confessed everything? Every sin? Every bad thought? And God, God is merciful towards us. That's what I'm saying. And so with the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. And God's saying this. He's saying, listen, uh, through, through David, he's telling David, he said, listen, listen, because David's speaking as he's moved by the Holy Spirit. He says, if you are merciful towards others, I'll be merciful to you. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. The hardest judgmental people will be judged harshly. The merciful people will be judged mercy, with mercy. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. So God deals graciously with people that are quick to forgive, quick to show mercy towards other people. Do that, do that. Well, I'm looking at the time, and we're plumb on a time here. So we're going to start this at verse 25 again next week, and I trust it will be a blessing to you. Psalm 18. Isn't this a wonderful psalm? Very practical. Very practical. Uh, you know, I, 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 I studied this through once, and, uh, and, uh, and I thought to myself, I'm missing something. I went back, and it was like the Lord turned the light on. There's so many wonderful truths in Psalm 18. Let's pray. Father, thank you for yourself, your son, and this great word here in Psalm 18. Lord, uh, may we practice it, put it into practice in our life. Bless us now as we look forward to the morning service to follow. In Jesus' name, amen.